what's up everybody i'm your host michelle lawrence and you are watching the one and only black tea the interview podcast series that is all about black women in advertising presented by muse by cleo and today i am so happy to be here with jasmine stanley what's up jasmine hi michelle so good to see you so good to see you it's been too long um please do tell the people what you do and where you're based um, I am in Los Angeles, California, born and raised to be exact, very proud to say that. Um, and I'm currently at the 360 agency serving as an account supervisor, um, working on accounts with at and So it's been very, very exciting. Okay, cool. Um, how did you find your way into advertising to start with? Oh my God, <laughs> by a complete fluke. Um, I played basketball for so much of my life and I, you know, was recruited to play at San Diego State a back injury kind of ended my career and um, I came back home quote unquote, um, to finish out and ended up at Cal State Dominguez Hills and a lot of my credits just weren't transferable or whatever the situation was still don't really understand it and I was just like I just need to get my degree and go on about my business right and um my counselor at the time was like, well, what are you interested in? You know, and I was, you know, we just had a great conversation. And she was like, I think you would be really, really good in like public relations. Have you really heard of it? Mm-hmm. And I didn't really know what she was talking about, but she introduced me to some of the professors and, you know, talked to me about some of the coursework um, and just really kind of set me up for success. And I fell in love. Um, I did an internship with the 944 magazine. And my first assignment was to be on an editorial shoot with Lady Gaga. Ooh. And it was from then on that I was like, okay, this is something that I want to do, but where necessarily do I fit was always kind of weird because I started out as being um, like a junior publicist, but that was a lot. It was very, very heavy um, just because of all of the requirements that come with it kind of in, you know, celebrity services, entertainment services and freelancing and things like that. Um, And one of my mentors kind of got me into advertising and marketing um, and this was really before kind of digital marketing kind of like really took hold. Mm-hmm. That was around, I want to say like 2014, 2015, maybe. Okay. Um, so I've been doing it ever since. So I, it, for me, I got started, you know, just by some amazing women um, who just kind of saw me for who I was and really understood what I was good at um, and really wanted to take the time to introduce me to new things. And from then on, um, just been working in different agencies, uh, both minority owned and not minority owned and have just really loved every part of it. But yeah, kind of stayed on the account side. Okay, okay, that's fascinating. I love that it all started from you just being like, I'm just trying to get a degree and someone saw you and was like, there's more to life, we can do this, we can do something meaningful with this. So shout out to her, that's awesome that she saw you that way. Um, and as you mentioned, you've been at a variety of agencies, uh, minority owned and also general market, which don't get me started on how much I hate that term, but whatever. Um, and in account the whole time. So I'm wondering um, from an account perspective, like how do you feel like your perspective as a black woman comes into play? Like, tell us about a time when it was like so crucial that you were in the room or in the mm-hmm. Zoom if you will, (laughs) as a black woman. Um, And like, you know, how does that kind of um, change the course of the work or, or, or does it? Um, It definitely does. Um, To be quite honest with you, it definitely does. And I think we, if we look at um, just kind of recent um, kind of marketing stories, we know of brands that, that have had huge missteps. Right. And so I think we've always asked the question of like, how did this, how did, who was in the room? Like who was making the decisions? Right. So early on in my career, seeing things like this, I was like, okay, I want to, how do I get in the room? Like, how do I really have these conversations? And so one good example that I could really give was when I was working on a project for Verizon, super conservative, very buttoned up. And they had this freestyle 50 campaign and I was going to be on the second year of it. And when I saw kind of the sizzles and the information for the first year, I was very, very disappointed because I was just like, this is not the essence of true hip hop. Like you guys are really missing the key factor, which is like the crowd in the scene, right? I think we all kind of have those images in our head of like Eight Mile and just like all those movies. And they're very, very authentic and very, very true. 
And the way that it was in the first year, it was very like in jazz lounges and just, I was like, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And so my immediate approach was, okay, who do we have that can really speak to the culture of hip hop? And the person that they were working with was Kevin Lyles. But in year one, they didn't really utilize him and his storytelling to really deliver the messaging. So my job, what I saw was that we needed to really figure out how to boost his voice in this campaign and that was something that I so we just developed a relationship Kevin and I um and I really had to really just kind of be that voice for him inside of those conversations with Verizon and allow them to really not necessarily be worried about what people are going to say you know when they're in these competitions but more so what stories can we capture outside of that and what stories can we tell with Verizon that aligns them with what freestyle is, right? Which is that really true desire to really be elevated and elevate yourself. And that was one thing that, you know, Verizon was trying to do. They were trying to elevate their brand. So finding kind of nuanced and niche kind of areas that the client can speak to um, in their projects is something that I found that I'm really, really good at, just really helping them see that it's not necessarily about the language and the cursing and and monitoring what people are saying, because that's going to happen. You know what I mean? Especially if you, if you're going to talk to us, you have to talk like us and you have to give us people that look and and speak our language. Um, And so you cannot box us in. You just can't, we're not going to allow that or else you're going to get something really watered watered down that we're not going to pay attention to. Um, So being a black woman in those type of spaces, I've always taken a lot of pride in being the one that says, I understand what you want because you want your brand to still appear very buttoned up, but you have to let us be us. You cannot change who we are. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I've been very successful at that because number one, I still present the culture. Like you you see it, braids, I've got so much gold on all this other stuff, but at the end of the the day- Right, the nails, hair, all that. Baby hair is is all, so I think they see what, when brands are talking to me, I think they see the type of person that they want to interact with. And so I think I speak to that also. Um, And then when it's time to show and prove, I'm giving them, you know, platforms and I'm giving them ideas that they can really kind of push through and and, and work with. So it helps for sure. I love that. How did the project turn out? Like once you put your touch on it, you got the guy's voice involved more. It was phenomenal. And it went on to be something that T-Mobile tried to copy um, we ended up garnering over a billion impressions. We were on The Breakfast Club. We were on Hot 97. We were featured in Complex. Like it was covered just in the culture. And it became something that was really, really special. Um, and it was something that Verizon is still trying to kind of recreate um, throughout different departments. And I still hear from a lot of them today um, just because it's important that, you know, they have those moments and they live in a cultural space, um, but they want to do it authentically. And so I, I still think they're still trying to strike a balance. So it was That's definitely the word, a- right. Like authenticity is really what came to mind when, you know, first of all, step one, having you in the room, step two, hearing your voice when you spoke up about something that did not feel authentic and, mm-hmm. um, and were, you know, listened to and incorporate and they incorporated your feedback in there um and then just step three like hip-hop if hip-hop is going to do one thing it's going to be authentic so we're not doing the like disney movie version of hip-hop where it's like like, yeah it was like it's not even a competition like they literally the the first year they did they literally had them going like one by one and i was like that's not a that's not a battle. Like, what is hip-hop going on in an orderly fashion? Like, <laughs> the thing about hip hop is orderly. What is going on? Get yeah. these people in a club, get their fans involved, allow them to really just say what they want to say. Yes, we can give them some parameters, but take these shackles off because this is right. not. This ain't. It wasn't it. And I was like, no. This yeah, is and, it, guys- and it wouldn't have been a good look for the brand had that been what ended up going to market. You know, as you said, the campaign because they listened to you ended up being a huge success. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really the lesson to be learned. It's like yeah. listen to the people in the room who represent the culture that you want to speak to. Actually, Absolutely. listen to and empower those people. And I think one thing that it taught me is to 
continue to fight, right? Because it wasn't easy. At first they were like, no, that's too risky. We can't do it. The names and the people, because I wanted to bring in T Grizzly, who was a part of it. And they were like, absolutely yeah. not. It's very I was like, you have to lay. It has to be somebody young that yeah. is about to, you know, explode. Obviously, we see where he is now. Like these are who the kids are listening to. And if you want this audience, you have to give them somebody that they're going to be entertained by. Um, and so there was a lot of pushback. And so I say it to people all the time. It's never be afraid to continue to pitch the people that you believe in. Never be afraid yes, of that. I love We're that. Get that pushback because there's a, a bunch of white people in suits who are worried about legalities and rightfully so. But at the end of the day, if their KPIs are what their KPIs are, which is to reach a certain market in a, in a certain you know Gen Z or millennial fan base, you're going to have to do some things differently. You cannot market to them and you cannot sell to them something that they're not interested in. Um, so you're, you're going to have to fight for those things, um, but be confident in it, speak boldly and just tell the truth about it. Tell the truth to them because that's what they're waiting for. That, at least in my experience, that's definitely what been what they've appreciated the most. I love it. You said it beautifully. Um, so another client services question for you. How do you feel uh, that working from home has impacted client communications. Is it easier? Is it harder? Are you over communicating? Like what's going on? It is definitely, it's definitely different. I wouldn't say that it's easier or harder, um, but I think the expectation, um, especially on client communications is that you have to over communicate. Right. Um, because, you know, clients can't just come into the office anymore. We can't just really sit down and have, you know, you, we, you've been in them, you know, those brainstorming sessions where everybody is in a room and we're able to talk things through. Um, and so being somebody who works, um, you know, a lot with with clients um, and then, you know, with creatives, you know, we're spending a lot of time delivering messages to both sides. And, and so that can be a little bit taxing. Um, but the one thing that is the hardest is really being able to share with clients um, kind of those creative, um, those creative focus points in a timelier fashion, right? Because we have our creative team who's churning out stuff and, and working and working and working. Um, but because they're working and you're at home and you can't see what's going on, you still have to allow the client to feel like they're being heard and their feedback is being implemented. And, and so it's just, it's just a, it's just a situation where you just have to really be patient with yourself because you do put a lot of pressure on yourself. You gotta be patient with the client uh, because they're always anxious. And then, you know, you gotta be patient with the creative team because they still gotta do the work, but they have to do it in such a different way. And I don't think that's talked about enough. Um, and so for me, one thing that I pride myself on is just trying to be available as much as I can. So obviously hours have obviously been extended for myself or anybody in client services, um, because there's always so much going on, but, um, but it's just a part of it. Um, normally, you know, these are things that you would have kind of in, you know, your weeklies or your daily meetings, whatever, but a lot of people just don't want to be on the computer anymore. So you have to be you have to be creative and your emails have to be a little bit longer and your agendas have to be a little bit more buttoned up. And I'm just thankful that I have a really great team who just allows me to really just kind of do the things that I need to do um, and, um, and allow me that space to really kind of, you know, speak to clients when I need to, how I need to, and then, you know, give my creatives the space to create. That's the last thing that I want to do is just get in their way. So I always just try to give them the space that they need and then I'll take whatever they're dealing with clients, especially on the, I'll, I'll take all of that on. I try to keep that as far away from them as possible. As a creative, I appreciate you. As a uh, fellow <laughs> ad person and black woman, I'm worried about you. Like what, how, how, how are you, managing just how much you take on and um you know what are some ways that you kind of protect your your life balance in this new age to be honest I've been very bad at it I won't even hold you I've been yeah. very very bad at protecting my life balance um and because because I want to do good work you know what I mean we, we yeah. still want to do good work um, and I think in this space, because time is very fleeting and weird, like some days I don't know what day it is, you know, you look up and you're like, oh my God, it's already seven o'clock. Like, how did I get here? Yeah. And it's like, I'm home and I may only have like one meal a day. It's really, really weird. 
And I've struggled with that. And I know a lot of other people have struggled with that. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, but I think the one thing that I can give myself grace in knowing is that I'm trying and I'm making a concerted effort to really make sure that if there is something that I want to do, or if there is something that I need to do, I'm going to go do it. Right. So if I need to just go take a walk, I'm going to go take a walk. Like I don't, I don't need a phone. I don't need any of that. I'm going to go do that. Um, can I get better at taking breaks? Absolutely. But I think when you're in a position like we are on the account side, you know, you feel like if you don't deliver this message right now, it could potentially hold somebody, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's just that, there's just a level of, I don't want to call it guilt, but you just feel like, okay, let me just, let me just stay here. Let me just figure it out. Let me just thug through it. Tether, um, you're tethered to it. Yeah, you just feel a little bit tethered. Um, and I hope that it gets better. Um, but I think we're all, I think we're all in it. I don't know an accounts person that doesn't <laughs> feel this way, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. we're trying to figure it out though. If anybody has any suggestions, please let me know. I mean, I think the first of all, I love that you mentioned giving yourself grace on the topic because I think that's huge. Um, on top of the stress of the job, you don't also need the stress of worrying about how you're not managing the stress of the job. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, I think that's, that's, that's point number one is that, you know, definitely don't want to be shaming yourself about this. And obviously you'll find it when you find it. Um, and I love that. Um, and then I will also just say one thing that has helped me in that regard is scheduling on my calendar like life, physical life moments. Um, because I've found that if, you know, I, because I am feeling more tethered, you know, I, those calendar notifications, they get me and I'm paying attention to what's there. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> so I, I yeah, schedule like lunch hour. Don't look at anything. Schedule like six o'clock take a 10 minute walk. Like I'm done. You know what I mean? Or even if I'm not done, I'll come back after this, but like, this is on my calendar. I got to do it. You know what I mean? Like enforce it with yourself a little bit. That's what has helped me. I do definitely try to have breakfast every morning or at least oh, like a couple great. of You know, just like little things, that. but it's like, girl, there are times I literally wake up and there's like 15 text messages and I'm just like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Right. And so mm -hmm. I've caught myself. I'm like, Jasmine, if you start answering these people now, the rest of your day is just gonna go completely by the way, right? right? So I definitely caught myself, and I'm definitely like, nope, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do this for myself first. I'm going to allow myself time to wash my face, brush my teeth, have yeah. some tea, all the things that I want to do this morning, and then I'll get to that because nothing is gonna change. Yeah, you know, so I, I think I've I've reconciled that that it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, but like you said, you do feel tethered. There are those moments in the day where you're just like, how? That I literally just sit in this chair for 10 hours. I know. You know what I mean? So yeah, it, it, it's, it's alarming, but we're yeah. figuring it out. Oh, I remember the other thing I was going to say. Um, so if your agency uses Slack, mm -hmm. uh, I have found it a huge relief to just not turn on do not disturb, but turn off the sound of the Slack notifications. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because that knock brush, I swear, is like such a trigger. And you feel like you have to stop whatever. I could be mid-sentence that I'm already writing an email. I'm already doing something productive. I'm already looking at work. And I stop because that little sound said stop. Uh -huh. Whereas I don't need to do that. If I can like the, let the little red dots form and it'll tell me how many messages I have. And if I look at it five minutes later, everything is fine. Everything is yeah. fine. Um, yeah. But speaking of like finding some bliss, uh, I know that you love keeping up with pop culture and I'm wondering what are your favorite ways? What are your favorite ways to, to stay in touch with just like the fun stuff that's going on in society? I am so big on watching documentaries, watching, oh my God, what was the documentary about? I think it was called Kid 90s or something like that. Okay. And it, was, and it starred the girl who, who played Punky Brewster Mm -hmm. uh, so let me try. And she did this amazing documentary about just growing up in that era of just kind of young child stars, like making the transition into adulthood. So it featured 
Um, it featured Leonardo DiCaprio. It, I mean, it just just their stories, right? So I'm, I'm really big on documentaries that tell stories, right? So I watched the Atlanta, Atlantis Morissette documentary. I watched, everybody knows, I watched the Janet Jackson documentary. I think I've probably seen it like five times already. Um, <laughs> absolutely love her. Um, but I'm big on storytelling. And so that's one way. Um, so anything that ties into kind of pop culture or phenomena, phenomen, yeah, phenomenons, there we go. Um, it's something that I'm really, really big on. So I watched the Beanie Baby documentary. Like, I love that. I just <laughs> love learning about how something became a thing, right? Yeah. Uh, watching the Britney Spears documentaries and just hearing her stories and then hearing her team stories and hearing those outsiders. I'm very big. Like, I guess it's why, you know, we do what we do is because we're very big into the story behind something or how something came to be. Yeah. And so for me, these documentaries um, serve as kind of that how right um it, it kind of weaves in what took place behind the scenes and so I've always loved those even if it was um what was it behind the music on VH1 I've always loved those um TV1 has one what is it called um unsung all that stuff I love those things so that's really kind of where I go um I love binge watching just documentaries just thinking into good storytelling and learning about some of my favorite artists or some of the greatest phenomenons in history. And it doesn't even have to be something that I was a fan of because I, I didn't stand, I couldn't stand Beanie Babies at all. Yeah. But just learning about kind of the black market that it was and, yeah. and the reselling that was happening, it was kind of like, you know, in sneaker culture, you know, reselling is, is huge right now, right? Um, and Beanie Babies had the same thing in the early 90s. And it just wasn't really, you know, talked about or at least not in our culture. And so just getting those stories and, and seeing how things have progressed and the, the the ebbs and flows of everything is just really something that I love to do. I'm a nerd. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was gonna say that's very strategist of you, but that's really cool. I love really? that too. So I yeah, that. I feel like that's they would want to know the reason why, you know, stuff was cool. It seems like it to me, I don't know. And I love watching old shows too, like shows that I, like I've never, don't tell me about it, but I've never watched The Office. And so I said, I want to watch, I want to watch that show. That's fine. Just because I want to know why. I want to know the reason why the show was so, you know, why it dominated, you know, the yeah. airwaves and why it become kind of this breeding ground for some of the, you know, greatest kind of faces in TV and film as of, as of right now. So I love just kind of taking the time to just learn about that type of stuff. That's really cool. But maybe I should. Maybe that'll be my next move. I'm just kidding. There's no way. <laughs> Why? Why is there no way? I don't know. I don't know. Strategist, like, it's intense. Yeah. Very intense. It's intense. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Yeah. I don't want but to I, do the strategy, strategy work. Yeah. yeah. I'm all strategists. Don't even get out. I, I respect y'all. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, res I love strategy so much, and that's why I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so I like to ask everybody: um, Are there any black-owned or just black AF products that you products, businesses, whatever, restaurants, whatever that you are just really loving right now that you want to shout out? Ooh, oh my god! Okay, so shout out to all of the black women that I know that are creating for themselves. One of my best friends in the world, Giovanni, who is probably just like the dopest person that I know has her own brand called Zevelyn Jean. Um, she is one of the, she has just this beautiful eye for detail. And so she started out actually crafting and curating these handmade that she was show, sewing herself um, head wraps for black women. Um, and it developed into this amazing line of bags, scarves, accessories, clothes. Like she was making a wrap dress. I have so many of her pieces. Probably should have worn one, um, but definitely check her out. It's Zevelyn Jean. Um, okay. She got information so that you have it. Um, another good friend of mine is the founder of Cool Ass Black Woman and Cool Ass Black Man. Um, it's been, ooh, it's been featured in so many different places, but I went to college with her. So, um, Ashley Glassby, the CEO and founder of Cool Ass Black Woman, please check her stuff out. Um, what else? And then, I mean, if you guys are really into like cakes and sweet treats, um, my good homegirl, um, Nicole Green has lip 
what is it? Wait, 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 what is it? Lip smacking cupcakes. Yeah, lip smacking cupcakes, which you can find in LA. Mm. Some of the best. Just sweet, just cobblers, cupcakes, cakes, you name it. It's just mouthwatering and so good. So those are three off the top of my head, but girl, I can sit here and go all day <laughs> with the drink products and just black owned businesses. Just shout out to everybody I know in my in my circle, both intimately and externally and extended that are just really creating and carving a path for themselves because to bet on yourself every day is just a special level of confidence that I don't think that black people give themselves enough credit for. And so if you are somebody who are betting on yourself every single day by chasing your dream and being an entrepreneur, God bless you, man, because it's, it's fantastic. And it's, it's fantastic to watch their journeys and it's fantastic to know them. So I love that shout out for us too, because black people are super entrepreneurial and it doesn't get talked about enough. You know, those stats when people are always like, you know, if you know five people, probably one of them is going to like have something horrible happen to them or whatever. But I'm like, I feel like for us, it should be, we should talk about how, if you know five people, at least one of them probably has started their own business. And that's just, that's just so true. Um, I think, you know, for every five people I know, at least one of them has a, has started or five black people, I should say, at least one of them has started a business or has owned a business at one point in time where they own one now. So shout out to us for that. Um, it's, it's just a, it's just a testament to the fact that we're now in a place where we know more. So we're doing more. Yeah. Um, and we're not letting any kind of outside influence affect what we know to be true, which is the fact that there's so much opportunity out here and it's not just for a certain portion of the world. Like we can have it too. Like we can have it all too. And for a, for a long time, I think, you know, our parents and our parents' parents' generation, it was like, yeah, like we can have it, but we have to have it within these parameters. Mm-hmm. I think our generation is now, and the generation behind us is now saying, nope, I can have it. I can have it wherever I want it, however I want it, to whoever I want to give it to. And there's really nothing that you can do to stand in my way. And when I tell you, I really look at some of my friends and I'm like, damn, y'all are amazing because just that level of confidence is, is supreme. And so just shout out to every entrepreneur out there making it happen. I love that. I think that's a fantastic place to end our talk. Thank you so much, Jasmine Stanley, for coming on Black Tea and blessing us with all of this knowledge. I love it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Black Tea. Please go to musebycleo.com slash Black Tea to follow us and get more episodes in your life. And then also make sure you're following us on Instagram so you can know all about the upcoming episodes and keep up with these amazing women. Follow these women. Um, and dig into their stories. And we will see y'all next time. Bye.